Hello my friends and welcome back to the Scott Ree project. Now I have been looking forward to showing you this one. It is personally one of my favourites. It's a dish I grew up eating, although it might have been the tin version, you cannot beat the original version. Today I am going to show you how to make the wonderful corned beef. Now the joint you need for corned beef is either silver side or a brisket. I always use brisket, I must uh, admit. I just love it with the texture of brisket. Now what I've done then is I've simply got my brisket joint, I've tied it up and I put a string across the length of it. And as you can see, I've left a bit of string on. Now, the reason I've done that is if you've got a curing tub, the old butcher I used to work for, Mr. Deus, used to do it like this. He used to tie some string on, put it into the curing tub and then just rest the string over the lip of the tub it was genius and then he would just put a, a ticket on saying what it was and when he put it in just simple simple things like that are absolutely genius you know these old things you pick up from all, all these old butchers it's a shame man most of them have gone to that butchery shop in the sky anyway i digress the first thing we need to do to make corned beef is to make a cure now what i've got for my cure i should put that over there is I've got three quarters of a pound of brown sugar. That's three quarters of a pound. I have three quarters of a pound of sea salt or rock salt, and then two ounces of saltpeter. Now saltpeter, it's a nitrite. Uh, be careful with this stuff. It can be quite controversial. Some people like to use it, some people don't. And as you can see, it's extremely poisonous as someone as put cross, skull and crossbones on it. I miss my vocation, I should have been an artist. So corned beef then, it's a salt cured beef product. Now, if you do not use the saltpeter, you will just get a gray looking finished product. What this does here is the chemistry lesson. This will convert the natural hemoglobin in beef to methemoglobin giving it that lovely pink color, which as we know we eat with our eyes, and that's what gives it that attractive look when we slice through it nice and pink, mountainly tender. Right, we are gonna get our cure on. I shall get the camera on the stove and I shall run through the little jar of lovely little aromats I've got in there. Now there are tons of recipes again out there on uh, YouTube and on the web. You can add things like ginger, uh, cumin, uh, what else we got? cinnamon sticks, but I'm just gonna keep it basic. Let me just show you what I've got there actually while we're here. On a little plate. I've got some juniper berries, some peppercorns, and some whole cloves. I don't know if you can see that. There's about a teaspoon, a decent teaspoon of each. Then we are gonna get on and make that cure. Okay then, this is a great all-purpose brine. So first we want to add five pints of water. So that's our five pints. And like I said, three quarters of a pound of brown sugar goes in. Three quarters of a pound of salt. The word corned beef comes from corn, which is also called corns of salt, hence corned beef. And this dish, it's used in many cuisines around the world. Right, that saltpeter, that nitrate, two ounces. You don't need a lot of this. It's just to give it that lovely color, but be very careful with it. Then we want to stir all that up. And what we need to do is bring this up to the boil and make sure all our salt and our sugar has dissolved. So into that then, our bay leaves. I always crack the bay leaves to release their natural oils. I've got three bay leaves. And then obviously my tablespoon of juniper berries, peppercorns and whole cloves. Again, I will repeat, you know, go to town on this. Like I said, use any of the spices or herbs you want to. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of dry thyme. If I add fresh, I would use that. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a bit in. And then I'm just gonna let that bring up come up to the boil and then once it's come up to the boil 
you must let this cool completely. Don't be tempted, you know, to think, right, that's cool enough. If you can, leave it overnight to go nice and cool. So it needs to be cooler than cool and the gang. Yeah. So just to reiterate then, when you want to make corned beef, go to your local butcher and you want to be asking for silver sides or brisket. I always use brisket. This is actually, like I said before, point end. I think it's a fantastic joint and it's absolutely made for corned beef. But I just want to show you how nice that is. You're looking for a three to four pound, which is a two kilo joint. And this is purebred Herefordshire beef. How can it fail? What a beauty. And while you're waiting for your brine to come up, you can always sing this little ditty. If you're feeling rather hungry, hey, there's a product you'll remember. Eat it hot or cold on Sunday, or you can put it in a blender. Corned beef, with chips or with salad, it's corned beef. Even Buckingham Palace eats corned beef. Hey, why don't you try corned beef hash? Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Don't switch off. Don't switch off. Okay then, once your brine has come to the boil and just let it tick over for a few minutes, just to make sure all the sugar and salt has dissolved, just like that, and you're left with this lovely, oh, pungent brine. So make sure, like I said before, this must be cold so leave it overnight if you can if not you know at least 10 hours until you know it's purely ice cold then what you need to do is what I made earlier is get a non-metallic container because the salt will react with metal and we don't want that and then put your cold brine into that and then get your lovely piece of brisket is what I made earlier like I said and just put it in to the brine now for a three to four pound piece of brisket you need 10 days minimum you know up to two weeks with something like this this one's been in this is a little bit bigger this has been in for four weeks and what you need to do is turn it daily if you can and the best way to keep it immersed is to put a plate over the top and put a lid on so you can see then that's ice cold brine put your brisket in weigh it down and leave it in there and then what you need to do then is to take your brine brisket out and then give this a good wash under cold water and then we will start the cooking process but that is perfectly brined and I can't wait to cook this now nice and firm ooh er missus Okay then, so just make sure you give that brisket or your silver cider a good wash, wash all the excess salt off. Then all we do in a pan big enough is we plonk it in, that's an official culinary term. And then we'll add our veg. What a beautiful looking plate. Lovely colours. So it's a couple of carrots, some leeks and some onions. And what we need to do then is bring that up to the boil without it spilling all over the shop. I think I need to take some out of there. And then we let it simmer for a minimum of two hours, but just keep your eye on it. You know, you want it nice and tender. So bring that up to the boil and then simmer away and we shall check it in a while. Okie dokie, this has been on the hob for four hours. Let's see if we can reach in there and get it out. Nice, mountainly tender, stay there not going to work. Let me get my knife in. Oh, look at it. Just remove that. And of course, you've got that lovely liquor stock built up there, which you can make many things from. Let's put that there. Here is our brisket. Now, I want to let this cool down a bit because I do really want to eat this cold, but see if we can just take a bit off. And you can see, look at the colouring in there. Let's try a bit. Oh, it's hot. Oh, man. Mountain in the mouth. Now, as you can see in there, it looks 
Look at the redness. It's retained the colour and it looks mad. It looks like it's not cooked, but that has actually got an internal temperature, if you can read that, of 96 degrees centigrade. So it's well cooked and it is so smooth, so tender, it's falling apart. So what we'll do, we'll let that cool down and we shall have a good look at it while it's gone cold. But that, at the moment, just have a look at it. That's just the end. Oh yeah. Okay, so I've let my corned beef cool overnight in the fridge and this is the finished article. Now, obviously when we cut inside it will be nice and red like we saw when it was hot. And by all means, eat this hot, it's amazing. You know, just with some boiled cabbage and some mashed potato and lashings of mustard and brown sauce, so my Irish friend tells me. And he's right, it's the way forward. But I wanted to cut this cold, so we'll just take a few slices and see how we do. So just gently breaking into where it's been brined. Just have a look at that. Is that not perfect? Absolutely beautiful. Let me just show you a piece of that up close. Look at all that marbling. And I love the fat around it. I mean, some people will trim the fat off. I don't think there's any need to. I actually love it. But there you have absolutely perfect, perfect corned beef. Now, obviously, you could take this a step further now and smoke it. But that. Just look at how good that is. And let's, let's just pull apart on the taste. Oh. And I have got the saltiness is absolutely spot on. Oh, God, yeah. Hang on, let's not muck about here. Let's bring in the reinforcements. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but let's get a bit on. One of those slices, not for the faint-hearted. And then, oh yeah. Well, my dear friends, what an absolute triumph that is. Just have a look at that. What a stunning, stunning piece of meat that is. And it was simple. You saw me do it. Make up that all-purpose brine. Get a decent cut of meat. I've used brisket. And you can see why. Because I want all that marbling. I want that fat. It's all flavour. So if you want to use silverside, by all means use silverside. I always go for brisket. But just follow the guidelines. Uh, a piece that's two to three pounds. 10 days minimum to two weeks. This was three to four, so I gave it four weeks, and this is what we're left with. An absolutely amazing piece of meat. And just have a look at the finished piece. Oh, look at it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project. Just check out my vintage cooked meat stand that's on. Hey, what a beautiful bit of kit. And thank you for watching this episode. Please, please click subscribe. I'm not far away from the magic 100,000 subscribers. Also find me on my uh, social media, Facebook, Scott Reed, the Scott Reed Project, and on my Twitter, at Scott Reed Project. But just look at that magnificent, beautiful corned beef. So until next time then, I shall see you again. Let's have a look at that.